Hello everyone. In the first parts of this module, you've learned how to create and implement a really strong search strategy. But it doesn't end there, right? The search is always developing, new things are being discovered, and almost as soon as you finish a search, it can end up being out of date. So in this video, we're going to look at how to keep up to date with research in your field. For this video, I have drawn not only on my experience and that of other researchers, but also on the knowledge of my colleague Claire Castle, and there's lots more information on the page she made on the Chemistry Library website, which I'll include in the resources under this video. Now, we all know that more and more things are being discovered all the time, but I was shocked to find out that we're now publishing over 2 million papers every year. That is more than were published in the first three centuries of research. So a huge amount of publications. And there's no way any one of us can keep up to date with all of that, or even the small field that we're working on. So it can be really tricky to find the time to read everything that's relevant and not get too sidetracked with lots of noise around it. And these are just some of the tools that you can use to help you navigate that problem. The first thing to do is set up a search alert. You've spent all that time finding your search term using all the keywords and the Boolean terminology. You found the right database to search. So make sure that the last step is set up an alert so that if the database finds any new publications that match your search criteria, it sends you an email and a link so you can quickly click on it and read it. This is a great way to keep your search results current and I strongly encourage you to do that for every important search as you do. And of course, bear in mind that the search will go out of date itself as you develop your project, maybe you start working on a different publication. It might be that you need to change that. So every now and again, consider whether your search alert is matching your current aims, and if not, go back and change it. Another tool you can use is a citation alert. And so you can get an email every time a particular article is cited within the scientific or research literature. You can do that on the publisher website, so on the article page itself, there should be a link to do it. You can also do it on databases such as Web of Science or Scopus. The result is exactly the same. And it's a great way to know who cites your work in particular. So I strongly recommend that if you publish an article, at least for the first few, you do this because it will be nice to know who else is talking about it and what they're saying. And you can also follow other people's articles, especially ones that you find really seminal in your field where you want to know who else is talking about them and what news coming out. Of course, this will only track one article at a time. So you need to set up multiple ones and don't go overboard and set up a huge number of them because it will become slightly overwhelming. <clears throat> Something else you can do is set up for tables of content. So go to the journal website, for example, and set up an alert so that every time there's a new issue, the whole content, the list of articles in that um, issue will be sent to your inbox. It's a great way to um, keep up to date with the field as a whole because you'll get a broad range of articles, um, some of which are directly relevant to you, others which might have an interest in passing for you, and others that might not be relevant at all. But, um, but it's good to have a, a sort of bird's eye view of the field. Um, of course, again, don't do too many because it does take a bit of time to go through the list of articles and you don't want to feel overwhelmed with them. Something else you can do is um, aggregate several tables of contents in one feed. Um, some publishers do this through their websites. Um, there's also specialist services such as ZTOC, which enable you, again, to get the tables of contents from multiple journals on one place. There are also specialist services that do a slightly more uh, granular level of curation specifically for you. For example, if you're using Mendeley or Zotero to manage your reference library, they can also use the information about what you've already saved in the library to suggest articles that might be useful to you. So with very little effort from you, that's a nice bonus feature that you can use. Equally, if you're using ResearchGate or Academia.eju um, to network with colleagues and uh, keep up to date with what they're doing, the sites have um, algorithms that will help you find articles that might be relevant. There are also specialist services that just focus on suggesting um, literature to read, such as Feedly, Stalk, and others. And if this is something that you might find useful, then again, experiment with it, try signing up, see if it's working for you, and, um, and whether that's uh, something that will be useful in the long term. The algorithms are really helpful because 
you don't need to know what you're looking for before it's suggested to you. You use your past behavior to inform future suggestions. And that also means, however, that you have less control over what's being shown. So on the one hand, you can find serendipitous discoveries. On the other hand, you can't have the specificity like following a particular journal or an article or a search term, as I've said above. Social media is probably one of the most common ways researchers keep up to date with things, and Twitter features quite prominently here. If you follow other researchers or institutions such as universities or departments within them, um, or even publishers, they will all tend to suggest new articles that are coming out and they will promote their own content some of the time. So it's a great way to be alerted of new literature that's coming out. And again, the individuals manning those accounts will do a level of curation and they'll hopefully suggest things that are of quality and relevant to you. Of course, it means you need to find the right people to follow, and that can take a bit of trial and error and a bit of experimentation, but that can be part of the process and part of the fun. The great benefit of this is the interactivity. Whereas all the tools I've mentioned above are a one-way street, uh, one-way feed of information, in this case, you can respond, you can support your colleagues with encouragement, you can discuss um, in more detail what's in the article, the findings and the methodology and so on. And it can be a great way to develop ideas and also a great way to network with colleagues. However, if you find that's too time consuming and actually it takes you down that distracting routes, uh, you don't have to do that. You could be following peoples and institutions and publishers without actually commenting and engaging in discussions. And that's a perfectly reasonable way of using social media as well. While we're on social media, I wanted to say something about metrics. These are ways to measure the impact of a publication beyond just the academic literature. Um, so they will include things like mentions in traditional news outlets, in social media, but also in policy documents, uh, learning resources, and so on. So quite a, a broad way of examining how society at large is talking about publication. And again, as well as doing a particular search at one time, you can also set up an alert so that if a one article or a publication is mentioned in any of those places, you will get an alert in your inbox. It's very useful for your own articles, but also again for articles that you're interested in written by other people. Naturally, this will be really relevant to you if your aims um, involve impact on society in some way, say you're a sociologist who wants to change opinion and therefore practice or policy on a particular issue. However, there are other fields of research where this would be less relevant. Um, for instance, if you're working on a particular uh, niche aspect of history that might not be of interest to people outside your field. And again, that's absolutely fine. There's no um, one size fits all in this case. It's just something that you might find useful. So to end, I just want to stress again that there is no perfect solution. This process of keeping up to date will inevitably involve uh, trying things out, evaluating, seeing if they work for you, refining your use of these tools, or abandoning some tools altogether. Just keep aiming for something that balances the need to find quality and relevant publications and reading as much as possible with time efficiency and being able to keep up with this reading as well as doing your research. And you will find that balance shifts over time, um, but um, try and find something that works for you. Now, next week, we'll stay in the area of social media as we'll talk about um, online profiles for researchers. And I hope you can join us now. Bye-bye.